Welcome to another edition of Boscov's Burke's Jazz Fest Spotlight here on the People Chronicles, and we have a very special edition for you. Um, a question came up actually during an earlier spotlight with uh, Mike Eben and Chris Heslop, both Frankie Scott Award winners. And we started Googling, I say we loosely, Lorenzo, our, our technician, started Googling for images, and there weren't a whole lot. So we started talking about who Frankie Scott was, and we decided we need to know why is there a Frankie Scott Award, and what is his role with Boscov's Burks Jazz Fest? And so John Ernesto found two associates, friends, comrades in arms of Frankie <laughs> Scott's, and they are with us today. Jerry Holleran, thank you for joining us. Thank you. I appreciate Glad it. Good to be here. And Tony Lynn. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Always a pleasure to see both of you. So what I know is not a lot. You, <laughs> you are, have always been very good friends with Frankie? Well, uh, you have to realize I'm an Auslander. I, I actually uh, didn't come to the Berks County area until the early 70s. And I always did like jazz. I grew up in Pittsburgh on the other end of the state. And uh, basically, I was looking for places where I could find jazz. And I, uh, you, you know, my wife Carolyn and I were married in 82, and she had, did not have quite as back, much background as I did in jazz. So I had introduced her to what jazz was all about. So we would look around for different venues where we could uh, experience jazz in the Berks County area, and uh, Frank Scott and Tony Lynn certainly were at the top of the list, along with Skip Moyer and a number of other groups that were very popular during the early 80s. I've heard that um, it's been said Frankie Scott was the keeper of the jazz flame, and, and then, of course, the Jazz Fest picked up. Well, I, I think that's basically true. The... Uh, you know, we're celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Berks Jazz Fest this year, and it, and it's kind of interesting to me that uh, Frank Scott was usually the the kickoff of every jazz fest. At the peanut bar. At the peanut bar. Yep. Yeah. And uh, he would always have a, a wonderful combo together, and I think, Tony, you were, you were many in, in many yeah. of those yeah. mm -hmm. uh, affairs. Yeah. But um, Frank was a lot of things to a lot of people in the community. And, uh, what was he to you? Well, to me, he was certainly uh, foremost. He was a, a wonderful musician who uh, typified the period of jazz that I was very much interested in. That was the jazz of the 40s. Okay. And, uh, was that a, a childhood memory for you? Were your parents jazz fans? No, they weren't interested in jazz at all. I think the first formal jazz thing I ever went to was uh, the Syria Mosque in Pittsburgh, and that, that venue is not even around today, but uh, Dave Brubeck was the oh, yeah. starting group. They, they weren't even the headliner. Ella Fitzgerald was the headliner with Illinois Jackette. <laughs> Which is a, an old, wow. old line group. Wow. So I, I've always been interested in jazz. I collected the various jazz records. So uh, when I got to talk to Frank at his various venues, and you know, we just hit it off very well. And he used to commiserate with me about how we needed more of a jazz presence in the Reading area. He, he had been there at a time Did when he operate nightclubs? Yes, he did. Yes, he yeah. had a couple yeah. of places that I, I didn't, I wasn't aware of, but uh, during the time that I did know him, he established a, a venue called the West End Social Club. Oh, okay. Which was uh, essentially uh, uh, right next to the um, fire hall at, uh, mm -hmm. at the entrance to the city. And on Penn Avenue there. Right 
right? It's right right second, down the street. We're the at 505 Penn Street now. So right yeah. as you're coming across, you're the, coming bridge? across the bridge. Across the bridge, okay. yeah. And then yeah. apparently there was a social club that was run by the uh, fire company. Mm -hmm. And he, <clears throat> you know, I helped facilitate him getting some banking contacts so that he could buy this property. Frank was very handy with his uh, carpentry and what have you. He, he renovated the place and set it up and he was going to have the ultimate jazz club. Yes, he So was. He, yeah. he had a lot of interesting guests that came there, including uh, uh, Oscar Peterson, the great oh my. The mm -hmm, former mm -hmm. pianist. I didn't know that. He was in yeah. for a star series, and, and Frank had enough of a contact there that he managed to get him to come over to the club afterward. Uh, Frank had a number of very good musicians, including Tony, who who uh, participated in that in that effort at the uh, West End Social Club? It was a it was a, a very interesting place. He had people like Wild Bill Davis, who was oh, a boy. trumpet player. He would have Al Gray, who was a, yeah. a a boyhood friend of his that he knew, who had grew, grown up in the Stowe area down near Potsdam, and uh, Al Gray was had these white pearly teeth and he played the plunger trombone. He was just a fantastic awesome. musician, awesome. but he was loose as a cannon. <laughs> oh, that always makes it interesting. Now, speaking of loose as a cannon and musicians, Tony Lynn, you spent a, a large part of your career, from what I understand, performing. That's with correct. Frankie Scott yeah. and Tony, you're a staple at uh, the uh, Boscov's Burks Jazz Fest, always performing. You'll be performing again this year? This year, I will. In yeah. two different capacities? Two different uh, venues. Um, Bosco's the dinner jazz session. Mm -hmm. That will be, uh, I think, April 15th. Okay. And I think we'll get started around 11.30 or 12.30, somewhere within that time range. You can check that out. And um, as I said, we are doing... Uh, a kind of different kind of music. We, we kind of like just mix everything up. Mm -hmm. um, I'm working with Susie Ernesto, Craig Schallenberger, and a terrific bass guy. His name is uh, Bel Castro. What a name. Carl Bel Castro. Yeah, <laughs> but at any rate. Um, we have a lot of fun. We do all different kinds of music, and we will be doing the um, auction. There's an auction fundraiser that's held every year and you trips uh, all kinds of shows everything's available there all you got to do is put a little money out there and, you, and it you supports get, you get you, jazz yeah, fest right yeah. and it's 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 such fun and uh, we this is i think our second or third year that that we are doing this and it's such fun you know uh, you say tony sing a song i'm there tony <laughs> when you sing a song you just stop and go Wow, you, oh, you are you a very so amazing much. talent in your own right. And you're also, I believe, the second Frankie Scott Award winner. So yes. having worked with him and then winning that award, what does Frankie Scott mean to you and what does the award mean? The award was really very, very special to me. Mm -hmm. um, you hear people singing your praises, but... You know, you have a tendency sometime to say, oh, well, that was all right. It wasn't all that, you know. But when I received that award, mm -hmm. it meant that I did offer something very, very special yes. to our community. And working with Frankie Scott, I tell you, he's a, he was an extension of my dad. Really? <laughs> or mm -hmm. my uh, grandfather. That sounds like a very high compliment. Uh, it know, is. You say that One way. that, you know, I, I loved him dearly. He, his family, the, the contacts that we made, mm -hmm. he made throughout the years. You know, it was just, we'd go, we were talking about uh, the West End Social Club. Frankie mm -hmm. Scott loved New York, all of the activity there. He was like the he loved being in the heart of the jazz community, and it was everywhere. Mm -hmm. So with this club, his idea for the club to be like a short extension of one of the venues out of New York City, and it truly was for a, a taste while. of New and, York here in Berks County. Oh, it's County. such great mm -hmm. fun. It's such great fun. <laughs> you know, but um, wherever we performed, it was like, 
how do you say, it, it was just a comfort zone. The people were so receptive for what we had to give. And with Frankie, everybody and their mother knew him. And what if he just showed his face? These were the days I, I heard stories about him walking the bar with his horns. Okay, I came after those days. <laughs> <laughs> Just to qualify that point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Our home was actually right here on Penn Street, the Crystal Restaurant. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, we used to do all kinds of venues all over the place, and wherever we went, as I said, there was this fatherly thing. I was not allowed to sit at a bar. I was not allowed to fraternize with... Um, guys, so to speak, friends. He he had that. So paternal, that was his protection. Yes, 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 He's yes. He's looking out Under for you. Wing. Yes, he was. You know, and sometimes I would say, I wish he'd go sit down somewhere. <laughs> 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 that guy looked pretty good. <laughs> Tony, you said when you got the award, it meant you did something in the community. Was that? Um, a, a mentoring of Scott's or, or Frankie Scott, excuse me, is that something that was important to him beyond the music, it, 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 the impact in the community? What Absolutely. That? I, I think yeah. that was a driving force for him. The community, he was all about uh, getting the kids in a center city to become involved with music in any capacity. Um, he was always you know, on board uh, with uh, special projects mm -hmm. that would encourage children to be a part of anything special around the city as far as music, anything. You That's know, a that devotion. It takes time and energy. Oh, so my. he inspired you to do the same. And Because isn't that part of the criteria to get the Frankie Scott Award, not just your musical talent, That's but what you're it. doing, giving back? Right. Yeah, what you're doing with it. Yeah. For the exactly. community, what, you know, and... Uh, how, how your role in the community, how it's accepted, you hmm. know. Well, it, you know, you're doing a good job. You are a force in the community. You are uh, build, a building block. This is, this is what we all try to do. And this was his vision. Well, this was his vision. Listening to this and, and how dedicated he was not just to playing and enjoying that and that talent, but to making that difference. And then I, I think he was just alive for f the first five years of the Jazz Fest. Uh, somewhere Well, he there. died in 95. Yeah. And uh, the award sequence is, it, it's about 11 years now that we've been... What do you think he'd award. think of all of this? I mean, to, to know I, how Jazz Fest expanded and then there's this award. What do you think he's thinking? I think he would say he did a pretty good job if mm -hmm. people are still remembering him. Yeah. You know, uh, my wife and I have a private family foundation called the Geraldine Foundation, and that's what we use to uh, uh, fund this award every year, as well as the art of jazz. We, we fund that as as another project. The Gerlin Foundation, I mean, you contribute uh, millions to many different um, organizations, to projects, and I can imagine that there's lots out there, so you have to sort through it, you and, you and your wife. So what was it about um, Frankie Scott or this award or this festival that said, you know what, we want to get behind that and make it happen? Well, I was on one of the, some of the early committees when we okay. were uh, Bill Royston was heading up the uh, the Berks Jazz Fest, mm -hmm. and uh, that committee was making decisions about what artists they wanted to attract to the area, uh, what venues they wanted to get involved, and that sort of thing. Uh, but it was John Ernesto who, is, who who really planted the seed about well you know, what can we do to perpetuate the spirit that was Frank Scott? And it truly was a communitarian type of spirit because Frank was the first African-American to, to be on the Reading School Board. Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, Mary Ann Chelia Smith, who, who's yes. since passed, but uh, she was very proud. She was the head of that school board and was instrumental in getting Frank on board. He liked to help those center city kids that 
that needed help. He was involved with PAL too, I believe. He was mm-hmm. involved with an international yeah. program at PAL. His real dream was to try to get uh, instruments for children in the center city That's a gift. who could not afford yeah, okay. instruments. Uh, that was really left unfilled. I did manage to get him onto the Y Missing Institute of Fine Arts School Board, excuse me, the, the, the Board of Directors. And, uh, you know, he was the first African American on that board. And, trailblazing. Uh, trailblazing. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, what they had their own financial problems, but the one thing that I was so impressed with is the, the various teachers there said, we won't be able to supply instruments, but we will supply our services. And those teachers would go into the center city schools and, and teach classes in music. One's equally as important as the other, because what good is the instrument if you don't know how to play it? Yes, so. exactly. A huge gift, a huge legacy for Boscov's Berks Jazz Fest, and now we know a little bit more about who is Frankie Scott and why all of this is being kept alive. And thank you, Jerry, and your wife, Carolyn, for supporting this award and and continuing to recognize artists who are doing what he did, making a difference in the community, like you, Tony Lynn, and thanks for sharing the memory and and um, keeping it alive and continuing to do what you do. This year's award winner, I don't know if it's announced, so I'm not going to let it, uh, the cat out of the bag, but the winner's already been on a Boscov's Birch Jazz, <laughs> Jazz Fest Spotlight. Now you figure out which one it is. <laughs> yeah, very good. Oh, you thank got out you. of that. <laughs> thank you, thank you both for keeping it thank alive. You. Because uh, of your efforts, we all get to enjoy the festival uh, and the music and the, and the uh, benefits of the program. Thank yes. you. My pleasure. Thank you. Good.